default account and set up your password, successfully log in and log out of iSol, and navigate the ESS iSol time menu. We're going to get started by pulling up an email that was sent to me through iSol when my manager added me as a new employee. This email contains a link to allow me to set up and register myself with a new password to access the system. So we're going to go ahead and click on the link and our registration page is going to pull up. The first thing we have to enter is our authorization code. The authorization code is typically the last four of your social security number, but double check with your manager to ensure that this is the code they would like you to use. After entering our code, we need to create a password. Now this password is similar to a banking password or a school password. It must be at least eight characters long and it needs to have one uppercase letter, one lowercase letter, a number, and a special character in there. So we're going to go ahead and enter in a password and then retype the password to confirm it. After we create our password, the next thing we need to do is create a challenge question. So in the event that you forget your password, you'll be prompted with this challenge question and have to answer it correctly in order to reset your password. So I'm going to select a question from the list and go ahead and answer it and then confirm my answer. Now at the bottom, it gives you the ability to enter in a mobile phone number. Now this is not required, but if entered, when you forget your password, it's going to email you an authorization code. If you have your mobile number entered here, you can choose whether you want that authorization code to text you or to send to your email. And we'll talk about what the authorization codes are used for here shortly. Now, once you've entered in your mobile information, password, and challenge questions at the bottom, you're going to go ahead and choose continue, and the system is going to create your user account. Now that we've created our employee self-service account, let's talk about logging in and logging out. What we're looking at right here is our main login screen, and as you notice, there are two pieces of information that must be entered each time you would like to access the system. That is our username and then the password we have just created. So I'm going to go ahead and enter my username in, and then I'm going to type my password. Just beneath it, you'll notice we have our login button, and then we've also got a forgot password link. Now, the forgot password link, pretty self-explanatory. If you forget your password, you'll simply select this link. When you select the link, it's going to prompt you to enter in your username, which is typically your email address. Now, once you enter your email address in here and choose next, an authorization code is going to be sent to you. So. I'll go ahead and type it in here so you can kind of see the process. You'll notice that it's asking me to select the delivery method for an authorization code. The authorization codes in ISOL are used as a security factor to ensure that it is you wanting to reset your password. Now you're noticing that I only have the email option. If I were to put a phone number in that registration process that we just reviewed, I would have the ability to choose either email or text. Once I choose next, the system is going to email me the link with a code in it, and that authorization code is what's going to allow us to reset our password. Now, I don't really want to reset my password. I just wanted to give you an example of what this screen does, so I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel here and be brought back to the main login screen. I also recommend using the forgot password if you've entered your password incorrectly two times when trying to log in. The reason I suggest this is as you log into the system, if you type your password incorrectly three times, you'll be locked out of the system. Now, locked out of the system means that one of your management members would have to go in and unlock it in order for you to access the system. So rather than having to wait for the time for managers to unlock it, I recommend if I type the password in incorrectly two times, to go ahead and just hit the forgot password link and reset it rather than locking myself out. So I'm going to go ahead and type my login information in and we're going to hit the login button. Once I hit the login button, I'm going to be brought to my main landing page. Now let's talk a little bit about the landing page and then we'll move on to navigating our menu. 
Up here at the top on the left hand side, you'll notice we do have the ability to have profile pictures loaded. Some of your companies may load pictures, some of your companies may not. Just beneath that, it's going to give you your name, the position or job that you hold with the company, how long you've been with the company, and what your anniversary date is, so your hire date. Any notifications that the company would like you to know about will be listed in the notification section. And on the right hand side, any human resource contacts that have been loaded. Just beneath that, we've got the My Pay widget, which is going to show you any checks, gross pay, net pay, direct deposit, or the most recent check that's been provided to you. On the right hand side, any benefits that you are enrolled in, such as 401k, medical, dental, vision, will also appear here. So now that we've talked about the landing page, let's talk about logging out of the system. I showed you how to log in, but how do we get out? Up here in the top left-hand corner, you'll notice we've got quite a few different icons listed here. We have a little person, and if we hover over the person, it says user options. We've got a little time clock symbol, which allows us to clock in and clock out. We'll review that one just a little bit later. And then we've got the little push pin. And the push pin allows you to kind of move this side menu and kind of hide it from your view. So if I push the push pin, you'll notice that that goes away. Up here at the top, I can hit the push pin again and you'll notice the menu slides out. So it just helps you adjust your view. So we're going to take a few minutes over here on the left hand side and talk about the links that are listed here. The home link allows you to come back to this main landing page from wherever you're at in the system. So maybe you're on your time card and you would like to come back to the landing page. You simply select the user icon up at the top and choose the home icon. The My Account, if we select this, allows you to go in and add a mobile phone number if one was not listed, and even update your mobile number, adjust and create a new password and also a security question. So maybe you'd like to reset your password to something new, you could come in here and change that at any time as well as your security challenge question. The next link in here is our Learning Center link. Now the Learning Center brings you to some help documents within the system. The Learning Center also gives you the access to join our ISOLD University, which has quite a number of trainings to train you on different aspects of the system. The Link right beneath it is our log out button, and this of course is going to log you out of ISOL and bring you back to the main login screen. So at any time you can hit that log out button, brings you right back to this main screen. Now I'm going to go ahead and log back into ISOL, and we're going to review our ISOL time menu item. So give me just a second to log in. Now that we've logged back into iSolved, over here on the left-hand side at the very bottom, I'm going to choose the Employee Self-Service menu item, and then I'm going to expand Time. You'll notice that there are four links underneath Time that we're going to review. We've got the Time Card, Employee Absences, Time Off Balances, and Time Off Requests. Now I just want to briefly talk about each of these links. And then later in our training session, we'll go into full detail on what each of these links do. The first link is our time card. Once we select the time card link, this allows you to view your time card and see any changes or verifications that need to be done. So you'll notice up here at the top, we've got your name listed, we've got the days of the week, and then we've got your punches that you have created with the system. The next link on the left-hand side is our employee absences. The employee absence screen allows you to see a history of absences that have been entered into the system for you. So you can see up here at the top, we've got a filter for you to be able to filter based on date or a specific absence policy. And then right beneath it, we've got a list of absences and then the status, whether they've been approved or they are pending. The next link we're going to review is our time off balances. This link allows you to view your current, pending, and year-to-date taken amounts for each of your accrual buckets. So you'll notice that Mary has sick and also vacation. The last link that we're going to touch on for right now is our time off request. The time off request screen allows you to submit an electronic time off request to your manager or supervisor for approval. So you'll notice I've got a sick absence in here with the status of approved, and then I've also got, I'm gonna jump back to the calendar view, 
I've also got a vacation absence that's in there as pending. You have made it to the end of part one of this training.